Hello, ladies and gentlemen. A huge welcome back to everyone to the special weekend edition of Markets Around the World. My name is K2, and as usual, we'll be covering everything from the latest data and macro news stories to the key levels you need to be watching. If you love markets like we do, remember to subscribe and educate yourself better about how these markets actually work together. So let's talk about what happened in the market and the outlook to come. And let's expand the conversation, starting with the news. The U.S. stock market is entering a new month, with bullish investors aiming to overcome inflation and interest rate concerns. The S&P 500 ended Friday, with a weekly decline as the 10-year Treasury yield rose, breaking a five-week winning streak that led to a 4.8% gain in May. This marked the index's best performance since February bringing it up 10.6% in 2024. It's still early cycle for equities, said Andrew Slimmon, senior portfolio manager for U.S. equities at Morgan Stanley. He noted that fear of missing out hasn't kicked in yet, with many investors preferring to benefit from high yields in money market funds. Slimmon suggested that FOMO might emerge if the S&P 500 achieves another year of double-digit gains in 2024. He predicts mid-teen gains for the index this year, which could increase enthusiasm for equities. Currently, investor behavior remains fragile, with more concern about losing money in stocks than missing out on gains, typical in early bull markets. On Friday, U.S. stocks experienced volatility as investors reacted to new inflation data from the Federal Reserve. The S&P 500 reversed its daily losses with a late rally, though it couldn't erase the week's decline. The next news that shocked everyone this week is former President Donald Trump's chances in the 2024 White House race declined after a jury found him guilty on all 34 counts in his Manhattan hush money case. Betting markets on Friday gave Trump a 47.7% chance of victory, down from 51.8% on Thursday. Despite this, Trump's odds were still higher than President Joe Biden's, who had a 39.2% chance. Billionaire Bill Ackman expressed support for Trump after the verdict, agreeing with GOP Governor Ron DeSantis's claim that the conviction was politically motivated. Is the economy slowing? It doesn't seem so, based on this week's economic forecasts. Economists surveyed by the Wall Street Journal expect healthy growth in the labor market and improvements in the service sector. However, Scott Anderson, chief U.S. economist at BMO Capital Markets, is concerned about signs of a slowdown. Last week, there was downbeat data, including a downward revision to first-quarter GDP and declines in real disposable income and consumer spending. This could leave room for rate cuts from the Fed in September and December. One of the saddest news I read this week was, as consumer debt rises, so do bankruptcies, posing challenges for seniors. Bankruptcy, often seen as a fresh start, may not be viable for seniors facing overwhelming debt. With post-pandemic consumer debt soaring, more seniors are at risk. According to the Consumer Bankruptcy Project, seniors over 65 account for around 13% of bankruptcy filings, with an average age of 70 and debts exceeding $100,000. Many seniors find themselves in a situation where their debt surpasses their Social Security income, making bankruptcy their only option to escape medical bills. The majority of senior bankruptcies are Chapter 7 filings, as retirees lack the ability to restructure debt under Chapter 13 by returning to work. Let's expand the conversation and review some data we begin with. The equal-weighted S&P 500 compared to the S&P 500 index is at its lowest level since March 2009. This year, while the S&P 500 gained around 10%, the equal-weighted index rose just 3%. Meanwhile, the top-performing Magnificent 7 stocks have surged over 50%. Since its peak in February 2023, the S&P 500 has risen approximately 29%, compared to a 7% gain in the Equal Weighted Index. Currently, the top 10% of U.S. stocks make up about 75% of the S&P 500, the highest concentration since the 1930s. The market is heavily influenced by a small number of stocks. How long can this trend of the Magnificent 7 leading higher continue? The next data I want to show you guys is, in Q2 2024, S&P 500 companies' stock buybacks hit $333 billion, the highest since Q2 2022, and the fourth largest quarterly level in the past seven years. 
Completed buybacks were up 16% year-over-year in Q1 2024. Goldman Sachs forecasts buybacks to reach a record $1.15 trillion this year. Stock buybacks remain a significant driver of higher equity prices, underscoring their ongoing importance in the market. Once again, the power of stock buybacks should not be underestimated. In the U.S., it's now more affordable to rent than to own a home. Homeowners spend 35% of household income on housing costs, including mortgage, taxes, and insurance, while renters spend 29% of their income on rent, according to Zillow. In Q1 2024, homeowner expenses for median-priced houses amounted to 32% of the average national wage, nearing levels seen during the 2008 financial crisis. Renting an apartment is now cheaper than owning a typical home in all but one of the 35 major metros in the U.S. Owning a home is becoming a luxury. The next data I want to show you guys is, based on the provided information, stagflation, a combination of stagnant economic growth and high inflation, seems increasingly likely. The second reading of U.S. Q1 2024 GDP fell to 1.3%, below the initially reported growth of 1.6% last month. This represents a significant decline from the 3.4% growth seen in Q4, 2023. The downward revision primarily reflects slower consumer spending, which contracted by 2.0% compared to the previously reported 2.5% expansion. Meanwhile, the core PCE price index rose sharply to 3.6%, up from its 2.0% reading in Q4, 2023. A weakening economy coupled with rising inflation presents a challenging scenario for the Federal Reserve. If these trends persist, the Fed could find itself in a difficult position. In summary, while stagflation has not been confirmed definitively, the data suggests a concerning possibility, and it's a situation that the Fed will need to navigate carefully. The last the data for this week is, U.S. housing prices have reached historic highs. In May, the median sale price of houses in the U.S. hit an all-time high of $387,600 based on a four-week average. Prices rose 4% year over year surpassing the record set in June 2023. Since 2021, median home sale prices have surged by approximately 17%. Additionally, 30% of homes are still selling above their list price, according to Redfin. Housing prices continue to climb. Let's expand the conversation and see the heat map for May. The S&P 500 saw notable winners, including NVIDIA Corporation was up 32%, Qualcomm Incorporated up 24.3%, Arista Networks, up 16.6%, and AMD, up 15.7%, and Apple was up 13.5%, while top losers comprised Salesforce.com, down 12.7%, Lululemon was down 12%, Airbnb, down 7.2%, The Walt Disney Company was down 6%, and McDonald's Corporation, down 5.7%. The Wall Street Fear and Greed Index currently stands at 43,100, indicating that the market sentiment has shifted back into fear territory. This week's most notable earnings to watch for are as follows. There isn't much in terms of earnings for this week, but I'll keep an eye on NIO. It could be a good one. If you need this information later, please take a screenshot. Let's look at some charts, starting with the SPY 4-hour chart with the closing candle on Friday. This chart appears bullish to me. However, the bear case could be a retracement to the new low, which is 517. Despite this, the overall trend for SPY remains bullish. If the price breaks above 533, we could expect to see 550 this month. Let's move on to the QQQ 4-hour chart. The price broke below 449, which is bearish. However, on Friday, the price managed to close above 449. In this case, it could be a win for the bulls. However, if the price goes above 454, the next target is 460 and potentially new all-time highs. On the other hand, if the price drops below 449 again, there's a chance we could see a touch on the trend line. The IWM small caps one day chart is still in a choppy zone and consolidating. For the bulls to win, the price needs to go above 212. On the other hand, for the bears to win, the price needs to go back to 198 first and potentially lower. Expanding on the conversation and discussing the June guide and calendar. June presents challenges especially due to the quad witching event. Based on options market positioning, I anticipate a rally in the first week of the month, followed by a sell-off. 
However, I expect the last few days of the month to see a rally, closing the month in the green. Additionally, the NAIM index remains overblown and is likely to cool off this month. Keep an eye on the VIX, as it's expected to accumulate and rally back to the 1619 range at some point during the month. Let's wrap it up this weekend video with this week's key events. We begin with the ISM Manufacturing PMI on Monday, Jolt's job openings and CrowdStrike earnings on Tuesday, ADP payrolls, ISM Services PMI, Dollar Tree earnings, and Lululemon earnings on Wednesday, jobless claims on Thursday, and the U.S. Jobs Report and NVIDIA, 10 for 1 stock split on Friday. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for this weekend's video. If you found value in this content, please remember to subscribe and like. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching, and bye for now.